Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is part 4 of reproducing the Sutton Hoot Axe Hammer. So this is the final episode. So we are going to heat treat it, stick an edge on it, and create the ring. So we're going to start with the ring, which is at the end and is fixed to the swivel. Uh, mine's going to be a little bit different to the one pictured. Uh, however, I'm still going to be using wrought iron. I have this piece of 8mm round bar uh, from a previous project. So to start off with, I am going to draw this out because uh, I want it to be probably around somewhere between 4 and 5 mil round. Uh, I'm not too fussed about how it ends up. Um, this is probably the first part which is not directly based on the drawing uh, and that is because there is simply so little of it left. So to start off with, as you saw, I forged it square then round and then I will stick a nice long, elegant, pointy taper on the end. Uh, so again, I forge that taper square and then I will round it off afterwards uh, simply by forging it to an octagon then rounding it. So it's nice and pointy. Now this was probably about an inch and a half long altogether. Um, in hindsight, and I seem to use hindsight quite a lot in my videos, I wish I'd maybe drawn it out to three or four inches. Uh, so then I just went over to the Bic and started off the actual curve of the ring in there. So just gently teasing it around the Bic of the anvil. So then I threaded it onto the swivel and you can still see that my swivel is quite different from the original uh, which still annoys me a little bit but there we go, I don't actually have the time to make another one at this stage unfortunately. Uh, so then just take your tongs and finish off that circle. Then what I will do is I will just wrap these ends around the main body of the ring. Uh, and that's quite an Anglo-Saxon thing to do. You will see it on girdle hangers, on jewellery, uh, even on suspension rings for tweezers. Um, so I figured that it would be quite a nice addition to this axe hammer. Uh, it's not based on any particular evidence other than it had a ring on the end and the Anglo-Saxons did make this style of ring. So read into that what you will. So with the ends knotted around I will then dress that round. Now again this is something which I should possibly have done before the swivel ring was fitted into place. And here is the completed ring. So the next thing we're going to do is to put an edge on the actual axe blade. Uh, so I'm going to hot rasp this uh, because I believe that that's probably the way the Anglo-Saxons would have done it. Uh, because hot rasping goes a bit quicker than cold rasping uh, and I don't think they'd have had spinning grindstones at the time. So as you can see from the sparks flying off, uh, it is digging into the metal quite nicely. It did take a little while to do, uh, so, but I edited it down to two shots so that you guys wouldn't get bored. Uh, now you will notice that I'm not really rasping the way you should do. Uh, my rasp is in continuous contact with the metal. Like you should really lift it between strokes. Uh, but I found I was a bit more accurate in my filing in this manner. Do the main bevel, then do the underside to get a nice flat edge. And I did actually rasp it uh, almost to sharp at this point. Uh, and then I flipped it over to do the hammer face itself. Uh, now here you can see that I am actually rasping properly. You can see the sparks flying there, which shows how much metal is being removed. Um, all I needed to do for the hammer face was to flatten it really. Uh, and it went an awful lot quicker. And here we have the final shape. So, and you can actually see the transition between the high carbon steel and the wrought iron, which is quite nice. So we do have some filing marks left on there, I'm not particularly bothered by that. So at that stage, 
with it all shaped, I normalised it again. Yeah, so that's just a case of laying it on the fire and then setting it to one side. So I normalised it twice because I normalised it once previously. Uh, and then I actually used a modern quench oil to quench it uh, because I was quite nervous about water quenching it after all the work that I put into it. So I just laid it on the fire again, uh, got it up to critical, held it there for a few minutes and quenched it in the oil. Now, uh, I'm actually going to do a follow-up video where we have a chat about the heat treat um, because I don't know that the original one would actually originally have been heat treated. So, but I just wanted to do that to this one you know, so that I wouldn't get any hate on YouTube and because I wanted to see how far I could push it. So, file test to check the hardness and then I took my polishing stones uh, and just took it to the final sharpness that I wanted. So it's a good idea to wear gloves for this, uh, only because you can slice your finger open without even noticing. And then I just gave the underside of the axe, uh, which is the flat side, a quick polish as well, just to get that edge there. And I cleaned up the hammerhead itself. Uh, now I didn't actually harden the hammerhead. Uh, I didn't want to risk it and I don't think that it was necessary to harden it. So heat treating is quite a modern thing. Uh, an awful lot of Anglo-Saxon edge tools and knives and hammers weren't actually heat treated themselves uh, and there are papers which have been written on the subject which I'll chat about in the next video. So at this stage I used yet another modern thing uh, and gave it a proper clean up with a spinning wire wheel. Now I don't know that the Anglo-Saxons would have bothered cleaning up this because I think it was a tool uh, but on the other side they wouldn't have had such a big accumulation of muck and clinker on their ironwork uh, because they would have been burning charcoal. And here we have the finished axe hammer. Now I wasn't sure how much I would like this when it was completed uh, but I actually think it's one of my favourite things to have made um, because I followed the archaeological drawing quite closely uh, and it was quite fun to interpret. Uh, the ring at the end I think I could have done a bit bigger. Uh, the swivel is a bit bigger than it needed to be. The head itself is a little bit bigger than it should have been. Um, but I stayed as close as I possibly could to uh, Anglo-Saxon techniques uh, with the equipment that I've got. Uh, and altogether I am quite quite proud with how it came out. So it was hammer profiled, not ground profiled. Uh, the edge bevels were hot rasped rather than ground. Uh, the cheeks have come out the right size, the handle is fairly close to uh, what was on the original, so yeah. So like I say, I'm going to do a follow-up video where we have a bit of a chat about uh, the possible function of this axe hammer. Uh, I'm going to have a chat about the swivel as well. Uh, and yeah, it's come out quite nice and I'm quite proud of it. Again, I've left quite a lot of hammer marks in there because I don't think that the original one would have come out completely smooth. Uh, I did stick to a certain standard where I didn't want it looking rougher than a badger's bum, uh, but still I wanted it to look workmanlike and functional. So there we go. Thanks a lot for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this series. Uh, do stick around for the follow-up video. So thanks for watching. Uh, here is my list of Patreon donors. Uh, ever increasing joyous brotherhood of stuff so yeah thanks a lot guys a uh, special shout out to aaron p nelson who is currently my star donor uh, thanks a lot aaron uh, and thanks a lot to the rest of you as well who are contributing to um my work here and what i do so thanks a lot guys and i will see you all on the next one next week